and we're live i just got a very professional countdown from uh aston i love it i love it hi y'all hi folks hi internet peoples on the facebook realms on the zoom realms wherever you're watching this hi my name is brie my pronouns are they them there only i am on the board of sacred voices and i am also your host for tonight it's gonna be super cool if you've seen my face in sacred voices and videos before you know i'm weird so we're just gonna get right into it if you haven't hi i'm weird um so this is sacred voices we have an open mic every fourth friday of the month so this is our open mic tonight um if you want to donate to sacred voices and support the work that we are doing you can donate on our venmo which is sacred dash voices sacred underscore voices sacred voices <laughs> sacred voices you can donate to us through our venmo at sacred voices i struggled but that's okay um so yes donate um support the work that we are doing we are having a poetry workshop may 8th may 8th from 12 to 4 p.m at four mile historic park it is going to be an outdoor social distance workshop i will be one of the co-facilitators and it will be really dope um, if you are interested and want to sign up for this workshop, please get in contact with us through our Facebook page. There is more information to be learned about um, there, or you can go to fourmilepark.org to learn more information and to sign up through there. And also we are looking for a logo, a new logo. If you want to help us out and creating a new logo for Sacred Voices, we have a logo competition going on, a logo design competition, and you can make your logo for us and um, enter into this competition. There is a prize to be won. There also is recognition and appreciation for making us a new logo. Um, you can also find that information on our Facebook page. Okay, so with all of that logistics being said, I think we have our first performer here with us. I believe it's Poets and Muses, correct? Hi. Hey. Imogen. You ready? Uh, if not, I can stall. Oh, yeah. Oh, please stall. All right. I'm going to stall, and I will read a poem of mine that I have not seen in a very long time because it's in this fancy little notebook. Um. I can't find it. Y'all ever like have a really dope poem and then you can't find it because it's gone away? Oh yeah, I found it. It's lovely. And it is called To My Younger Self. To my younger self, I see you when I laugh, a deep belly laugh. I laugh when I'm alone. I see you and the small figures of clouds in the sky. I'm writing to you to say that you are and you will be my everything we have prayed about. I'm writing to tell you that all the efforts, trials, and hardships you've been through will make it possible to be fantastic and impact so many people. I want you to know that there may be things that you understand and there may be things that you don't, and that's okay. You'll be confused about your gender, your blackness, the way you love other people, and that confusion will be your biggest strength. To my younger self, I see you. When I throw temper tantrums, even when I'm 23, I see you when I stay under the covers when our mother calls for us. I see you and I'm so glad I do. I need you to know that this world and its people will not love you for your blackness. They will develop systems, thoughts, and power to try and destroy your little black body. But I will need you to love your blackness even harder when that happens. I need you to know that you can love whomever you want, regardless of what our family and others say. You are going to love so many beautiful people and each person is a lesson in how to love in a different way. I need you to know that life outside the binary is possible. To my younger self, my North Star, my beautiful creation, Brianna, you will be the most powerful person we will ever know. I love you, I love us. P.S. You'll meet this really cool person named Carrie Joy who will change your world. P.P.P.S. You'll fall in love with a black woman and it'll be beautiful. And that is 
my first poem. And to who? I can keep stalling. <laughs> That's totally fine. I can keep stalling. Is that a yes to keep stalling? I should read another one. All right. I have like five notebooks prepared for this. I am prepared to stall as long as possible. Alrighty, this is another poem. I'm a very cheesy poet. I'm a very like love poem poet. I'm one of those, but I don't tell people that I'm one of those. So shh, it's our secret. Don't tell anyone else. Um, I love you. I love you as in I took out the trash for you. I fought a fire breathing dragon for you. I found your favorite ice cream that never seems to be on sale for you. I love you as in I want to free fall for you. I love your black skin just as much as you do. Trust me, I do. I love the way you never diminish your power. I love you as in you my nigga, someone who I could see Octavia's world and dreams come true in. I love you, I love you. And what I really want to say is I really love you. So that's a quick I love you poem. I write a lot of poems. Um, I, keep I have so many notebooks, y'all. So many. I also miss the real world. I miss outside. I miss where people can like laugh at my jokes that aren't funny. Um, I miss that. I miss that so much. Um, I'll read another one. And it is an ode to baptism. I'm a Baptist child. I grew up Baptist. Am I Baptist now? No. Um, do I respect it? Yes. Um, and this is an ode to baptism. At first, I was confused as to why my church had a bathtub. I always felt weird watching black bodies get dunked in there and come back up still dry. Holy water birthed from ancestral libations the preacher may have forgotten, but the waters remember. Remember what it's like to fall in love with black bodies. Remember to trust another human being. One must be portrayed first. O oh, cometh sinful bodies of the Lord, those whose hips remind me of rough hands. Come to be congregated into this church, this ballroom, this family that has no blood to shed. The doors have always been open, the little cousins sucking on peppermints to a queer band player in the choir. O oh, cometh and bring family in tenfolds. These doors have never been more open. that one I have a couple more but for the people who are just joining us hi my name is Bree my pronouns are they them I am on take your voices board um we have open mics every fourth Friday of the month and we have a poetry workshop coming up May 8th from 12 to 4 p.m at four mile historic park if you are interested in participating and being a part of our workshop, you can go on our Facebook page to learn more about it, or you can go to fourmilepark.org. I have to look at my notes because I was going to forget. Fourmilepark.org to sign up there. I'm going to be one of the co-facilitators for that poetry workshop. Um, it'll be social distance outside, and we are going to have a very fun time with unpacking identity, loving poetry, writing poetry, maybe, you know, stumbling into poetry, and it'll be fantastic. If you want to donate to Sacred Voices, I'm going to get this right this time, Aston, you can donate to us on our Venmo at Sacred Voices. No dashes, no underlines, just Sacred Voices. I got it right this time. Um, and we have open mics every fourth Friday of the month. What else are we doing in our in our organization? We have a logo competition going on. We are looking for a new logo for Sacred Voices. We would love to rebrand ourselves. Um, so if you are an artist, if you know an artist, uh, preferably a young artist of color, we would love to showcase their art and be able to use their art um, for our organization. There is a prize to be won if you get picked. Um, and also just like a lot of appreciation from us. Um, we're not that very artistic over here. So making a logo is pretty hard. Um, so we would love your help. And with that, I will read a couple more poems just to get folks into the get go. Um, and then we have a lovely performer at 645. 
um, I can't convert time. So if you're watching this somewhere else, I'm sorry. Um, okay. I, someone's watching this from our Facebook page and just texted me. Hi, Korea. Hi, Sib. That's hilarious. I am a cheesy poem. All right. This is called My Name. I like writing about my name. I think everyone should write at least one poem about your name because it's dope. Folks always tell me I got a white name for being so black. My name is Brianna, born from Alila and Daryl is the grandchild of Thomas and Dorothy. I asked my mama why she didn't name me something cooler, something more elegant. She replied, you would have been an Amy or a Daryl Jr. Would you want that? I proceeded to say nothing more. My mama named me this to match with my sister. Eight words, eight ways to join two black bodies together, Brittany and Brianna. Folks always tell me I got a white name for being so black. My name is not Brianna, Brie or Brianna without an H. My mama made this name to be black when people truly hear it. The small H is an act of rebellion, forcing blows to spell it right every time. The small H makes sure you pronounce the uh at the end. The small H is a dream I wish to have. Whenever I pass by name tags and keychains and patches at gas stations, fiddle with the B section only to see if they will acknowledge me. The small H is a facade over the phone and email. No one ever thinks a Brianna could be black. No one ever wants to. Folks always tell me I got a white name for being so black. My name means high and noble and Celtic, white passing and Oreo in English, punishment of the highest degree from my mother when Lene Hill is at it. Sweet tea and apple pie in my grandmother's house. Folks always tell me I got a white name for being so black. My name is my own. My name is as black as my history. It runs blood deep, breaks generational curses, acknowledges to the people that I am alive. And that is my poems and stuff. Thank you. I miss the real world where I could hear her claps and see people clapping. <sighs> this Panasonic, this Panda Express sucks. Thank you, y'all. <laughs> yes. All righty. I have the wonderful um, privilege to introduce our 645 poet. Um, oh, I am really bad with names and pronouncing names. Um, is it, is it Emojin? Emojin? Uh, Imogen, Imogen A-Rate. Imogen A-Rate. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. I have such a hard time. Okay, so Imogen... Imogen Arait is an award-winning Asian American poet and writer and the executive producer, okay, and host of Poets and Muses, an award-winning weekly poetry podcast. She has written in four languages and published in two, okay. Her work has been featured in journals and on three continents. Please give a wonderful, wonderful virtual welcome to our amazing dope poet come into the stage thank you very much we really appreciate it so um very nice meeting you all for the first time i wish it wasn't under such nervous nerve-wracking circumstances uh i've had a busier day than i thought so i'm a bit um behind but uh in any case let's get to it right so my first poem is called Eliminating Temptations. I tell my mom not to visit the accountant's office. Rona's run amok, suffocating freedom of movement. A news article said an elderly Asian woman was shoved to the ground. Donna wants Rona to be our fault. The walls of my apartment wrap me like a protective cloak whose porousness amidst the chilling draft of side-eye glares. I scrub, I scrub myself clean of my heritage, but my eyes, my cheeks, my nose tell another story that doesn't allow a really bad day. 
to end in a murder spree that's for a paler lot than us. Someone told me I'm the wrong shade to opine. Then flash the peace sign because V fingers can scissor away the pains of exclusionary acts. When I'm standing at the back of the BIPOC line, I tell my mom there's only so much I can do to protect her. Thank you. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to go between my document and seeing you all. <laughs> so please excuse me if I'm a bit slow um, on the uptake. The next one is called the Disappearing Act. Did I tell you that I'm studying to be a magician? My best trick is a disappearing act. Don't you want to be a volunteer? Don't you want to know what it's like to evaporate into sunlight or disappear into the night? Why, you may ask, I have to thank you for the inspiration when you kept trying to convince me that what I know to be true are lies. I knew you wanted some magic in your lives. Since I'm also a grantor of wishes, I am here to help your world disappear. Scrub clean that pretty veneer so it will show the ugliness that lies beneath. You called for a magician, and I am here to answer your prayers because I know you are, like me, tired of the lies. Tired of weaving new coverlets that inadequately hide all the dirty secrets that keep breathing new ones. You want the world to know, as much as I do, who you really are the wrongs you've done, the bodies you've been hiding, the souls you've crushed. Thank you. This next one is called Preparation for Flight. Um, it was recently published in um, a Beirut based uh, electronic magazine called Documented Experiences. <clears throat> Phoenicians from Arizona and Lebanon gather at the portal slated with their corresponding letter, some toting shoulder bags big enough to lopsie tired torsos leaning against the thick air of anticipation, reverberating with the murmur gossip of the queuing passengers in attempt to dissipate their uneasiness. Protein acquisition is on the mind of previously infamous foodies who have abandoned their social media feeds in search of survival, frantically attempting to embed the grip and yield of naturally occurring meats and legumes on their teeth before their feet live off into zero gravity. Deep space, a familiar concept in the logical mind, but resurfaces fears instilled by moving images from previous decades. Technically, everyone has been trained about expectations from this, their last flight from the touchstone of home for the new one whose air has never brushed its strange touch against their goosebump skin or the hairs in their nostrils to associate living breath with a chemical makeup of an unfamiliar atmosphere. Water will be rationed just in case, whose parameters no one explained to anyone's satisfaction. Have faith is ingrained through repeated assurances now called upon by fingers rubbing nervously religious pendants hanging from stiff necks 
cranked to peek into an uncertain future. Thank you. This next one, like the first poem I wrote was um, published in the New Verse News, which is also an electronic publication um, that's based on current events. So you could probably tell well, from this poem when I wrote it. It's called Reacquitted. Dying stars burn the brightest. Europe's birth rate is falling. Italian towns offer abandoned homes on the cheap. Even in an COVID year, nearly one, zero, 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 women and children died on the Mediterranean in pursuit of safety. The Sonoran took its biggest gulp in 10 years as desiccated remains are picked from between its gritty teeth to stage a caravan. One in five American households speaks a language other than English, but my people can't get him a best pick nominee without the label foreign. Be grateful that you are now presented with a choice between black and white. Prostrate melaniferous bodies weave into a shroud, covering the distance between George Floyd and today. Be grateful for crumbs that drop from the high table as we scramble and, glad and gladiate in spectacle for droppings. Half a million seemed like an impossible number last year, Valentine's Day was still lonely, but in person. Be grateful. Why aren't we grateful? Why are we so ungrateful? We are given a choice now. Isn't it enough? A cloth cover is the real hindrance to liberty. The 2020 I Voted sticker, a high price memorabilia for the lives risked to those other than minorities. Forced hyphenation, worn as a crown, trudge past other saintly feasts, lay bare the sacrifice. Be grateful for the little things. The big ones are for the rarefied, the falling birth rate, the fear of extinction. I guess they always knew dying stars burn the brightest. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Thank you. All right, now I have to find another poem. Um, I'm gonna read some, uh, something a little bit happier. This is called Wanton. You know, it's when you're switching, when you're looking for a word to, in your document that you realize you have certain favorite words that you use over and over. <laughs> so this is called Wanton. Darling, you make me sharpen my canines in anticipation for the hunt of a delirious chase to pump new blood into an unrequited heart, warming the cooled muscle for a rejuvenating exercise, raring for the first taste of salted flesh still flushed, blushing Victorian sensibilities while hunting fever dreams, tracking a scent seductive, Irises expand like the night engulfing your figure desired. Unsheathe the clawed paws to shred ties of civility and sheer buttons from their seat. After you make the requisite supplication on bended knees, moistened lips spread wide to engorge the meaty feast.
All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time and nice meeting you all. I look forward to everybody else reading. Nice meeting you as well. You definitely lived up to your bio, award-winning, published, journaled, all the things. You deserve all the flowers, all the things. And I was here for all these poems. Thank you so much for your magic. Alrighty, um, I can stall until seven. Or Diana, are you are you good to good to go? Okay. Up next, coming up to the virtual mic. I wish we had like a virtual mic. Like I wish Zoom made like a virtual mic sticker where you could pass it to people. That'd be nice. Right. All right. Coming up to our virtual mic, we got Diana. She is a dope person. I got the pleasure of chatting with her before the open mic even started. She is from the Ramari tribe and she's a dope Chicana poet, writer, got some books coming out soon, just got magic for us. Thank you. Um, my book series is coming out, it's called Clashing Realms. I'm really on book two, it's a seven book series, so we'll see when that comes out, hopefully in a couple of years. Um, I have a couple pieces. Um, the first one I'm going to perform is called Where I Come From. And this is my first time, so <laughs> give me a little mercy. All right. Where do I come from? For my mother and her mother before her. Their breath and life, a story of me before I had arrived. Their voices whisper to me as I seek my spirit within. Where I come from. The land and the journeys through desert, seeking, seeking a life without fear. But when I awoke, it was fear that soon met me. That desert my mother crossed, leaving a lingering heartbreak of what life should have been, yet will never become. Will my feet carry me as they have for my ancestors before me? Run with sandals through wood and heat from those who sought to enslave them from a world across the sea? When I look into the mirror, a reflection of what they saw stares at me. For the stories tell of a pale evil that would consume them. If my feet do not run, then shall my heart carry these dreams within me instead. Through the, through the tears and the bruises, I still feel it's drumming underneath my skin. A reminder that even when my spirit lay dying, this body of mine will exist for when I returned. I do not come from the land nor my mother's womb as I once thought. Those only histories of this shell I call myself. But within me is another story. The universe folded into something small and yearning. Sent by the first birthing of life, I have awakened here. Soon I will return from where I came. Until then, I must answer this question with, this is the land from whence my mother ran. This is the world in which my burdened father surrendered. This is from where I grew and grow. Thank you. This next piece is called The Unexpected. It's a love poem. And the unexpected is the most life-changing event one can be given. You are living your life every day just like any other. Then you receive it, the unexpected. You stand there dazed, wondering how you couldn't have seen it coming. It can be a beautiful, it can be beautiful or horrifying, a blessing or a curse. I'm thinking you're the beautiful blessing I was never expecting. An old wish being granted. So far, I welcome you, barging through the door addressed my life. I was sitting in my consciousness, surrounded by my books of memories and the smell of knowledge, nestled between the fire of my soul and my comfort chair known as routine. You came in and I fell to the floor with the force in which you entered. Light made of, air, light made of challenge and equal surrounded your silhouette. The light entering blinded me and the fire next to me roared as of knowing you'd satisfy every craving I carried. And just as you barge into my life, I know I did the same to yours, my unexpected. Alrighty. Mm. Flip through my notebook. Okay. This one is called To the One I Love. I want to love. I want to love so passionately that the heavens stare in awe. I want to be filled with love into my body, feel so warm, even my fingertips turn red. And I have love, but all the love I gave came from a place of loss. 
I had only loved to seek for something I craved within myself. I no longer wish to love in that way. It leaves you sore and rotten, so I am left scraping out these leftovers in my heart. I will only seek to give others what I have already given myself. And I'll love these words that pour from my soul so passionately that I fall in love with myself all over again. The heavens will watch me and only see a blazing sun, and it will stare in awe with all that I have created from within myself. How much time do I have left? So you have until 7.15. Oh, okay. Good, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is called The Will. There I was, existing without the will to exist. And when it felt like the weight of all that was wrong and painful lay on my shoulders, I would close my eyes and fall into the world that I had created. I lived through the people made from the last bits of my soul. And on the, and on the nights when I only wanted to leave this world, those bits of my soul whispered back to me that there was something still worth living for. Eventually, I decided to live, even if it was only to tell the stories inside of me. But slowly, those stories turned into screams. And now I cannot ignore the will of my soul to live for more than just breathing. All right. I wrote this one pretty recently, actually. Um, mostly out of anger. And so, yeah. So, this is called No Longer Human. Why? Must we stifle our pain while we protest your actions for the sake of saving you from the consequences of your generational violence that has continued to this day? You came to our land, pointed to us and said, you are in our way until there weren't many of us left. Yet you continue to invade the reservations you killed us into. When you look at us without acknowledging our humanity, you forget that you are removing your own. When that's gone, what will be there to stop me from taking what you have stolen? There will be nothing as there was nothing to stop you. And if you take these words as acts of violence, that means you realize the inherent violence within your past and your present. We are human. Elijah McLean was human. George Floyd was human. Breonna Taylor was human. Adam Toledo was human. The 1,500 migrant children lost were human. The 5,712 murdered or missing indigenous women were human. And yet, we must live our lives knowing that to you, we are less than human. For why would the people you stripped freedoms from, land from, language and family from, deserve anything more than what you have given us, a false sense of freedom? We are not free, we are not equal. Your policies and systems of government prove as much. I watch exhausted as my family, my friends and community suffer from your politics based off our dehumanization rip its way into us in ways that are later excused as I was scared for my life. I mistook a gun for a taser or Mexicans are rapists. These sentences imprinted in my mind as a reminder that your violence didn't end in the 1950s, with the civil rights movement. These movements must continue because generations of suffering also continues. All right. And then these next pieces I'm gonna share are come from my book series, Clashing Realms. And then um, it's kind of like history told in a form of poetry. And so this one's called Land of White, spelled W-Y-I-T-E. Um, here we go. Silence beats through a sleeping mountain. Cold clings to the cavern, sending wisp of the wear down a traveler's back. Echoes of ancient stories bobbing in the air. Their dim light illuminates only two paces ahead. The shadows stretch out, holding onto the traveler's warmth. His finger quivers into a purple wisp, flashes of a black-haired warrior wrap up his arm. She widens her arms in an embrace, sinking into his flesh and bone, leaving behind shrieking shadows orphaned without their light. They slink into the mountain's walls to wait for another story to reach its end and illuminate them again. The traveler has sunk to his knees, eyes bulging as the sight of blood red rivers leave him scratching at the ones inside of him. White eyes flash across a mass of unmoving bodies. Milk colored substance flows down the warrior's cheeks. Her sword sinks to the floor, her black stained hands grasp at her neck. From across the battlefield, a beautiful beast widens his wings. 
His outstretched hands close slowly until they're balled into fists. All that is heard is the fall of, of a warrior's body. There she lays, tears stained, next to her comrades. The sky blackens as winged monsters rise and conquer the land of white. And then this one's called Fallen in the Legend. The previous one took place, took place in the Tibetan realm, is one of the realms in my world. And this one takes place in Galassiol. And it's called The Fallen and the Legend. A circle of stars cluster in the sky above. A ray of silver light falls from the stars, landing on the peak of a sky piercing mountain. A creature with the universe in her sits underneath the light. Her gray tinged skin holds rivers of silver that drip out of her like molten stars. She turns towards a fallen, clamoring up the rocks. Once a hero, the fallen sinks to his knees in front of his salvation. Glittering dust of departed souls lift into the weightless air, entering through his panting breaths, an agony of voices courses through him. The creature speaks into him. His only thought comes to fruition. How do I save my people? A life once lived flashes through the universe. The image of a purple-haired girl fills the sky with an eye of stars in sight. The fallen brushes his scarred fingers against her image. The souls inside of him scream in recognition. He becomes her. There she stands, blazing sword made of a living star in her hands, standing against impenetrable darkness. I'm gonna drink some tea. Behind her, an army of differences stand together. The stillness of ante anticipation, taste of fear, as the culmination of all that has been and will be stands on this day. With her war of vengeance, the opposing tides meet. Death fills the air, pungent with heavy iron. The girl cannot tell whose death is which until she watches a dragon fall from the coal colored sky and the man she once loved falls with it. The universe is pulled into the girl, her eye dotted with galaxies become the center of, of, his, of existence. A second of this is all she can achieve. A second is all she, all she needs as the impenetrable, impenetrable darkness reaches her. The fallen awakens. The sky contains no image, his body no souls, but a legend has been placed inside of him. The creature turns from him, her purple colored hair now familiar. She reaches out towards a circlet of stars, the falling light creating a pommel in her hand. In the light of glory, there are prices that must be paid the creature says, deliver him the blinking sword. And those are all my pieces that I have prepared for tonight. Thank you for coming here and allowing me to share. For being here. It's always the new timers who always just like blow the whole show away. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, thank you. Lovely, lovely. Um, for the folks who are joining us virtually or via Facebook, hi, you stumbled upon Sacred Voices Open Mic. We have open mics every fourth Friday of the month. Today is the fourth Friday of the month, so we're here now. Um, Sacred Voices is really dope. If you want to donate to us, you can Venmo us at Sacred Voices. Um, I got that right. Ding, 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 ding. Um... We have a workshop on May 8th, 2021, um, from 12 to 4 p.m. at Four Mile Historic Park. Learn more about it via our Facebook page and all the fun stuff. We have a logo design competition going on. Um, and sorry, I am messaging people. Ah, 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 ah. Sorry, I'm very weird. I can't multitask to save my life. Um, Natheo, are you you good to hop on or do you want me to say one poem and then you, you hop on? I could go either way, to be honest. Let's have you go, cause I'm just weird. <laughs> okay, I am also weird, but we'll just kind of roll with it. Um, OMG, Susie, I'm so excited to see you perform later, um, miss you. But okay, so let's see. I'm gonna start with kind of an old piece and then I'm gonna do some new shit. So 
I'm excited. Oh, <laughs> y'all can't see Susie, but oh, hugs, hugs as well. Um, but yeah, so this is a kind of an older piece. Um, y'all have probably heard it before if you've ever seen me perform, but um, I it's kind of in conversation with the second piece that I wrote, so I'm just gonna share it for like context. Um, and yeah, so this piece is called The Tale of How the Moon Swallowed the Sun and Burst into Flames. Above my bed once hung the paper mache mosaic you bought me in Cuba, a colorful portrait of the moon cresting the sun. Subconsciously, my brain came to see your likeness in her visage, full figure, long lash strokes, deep red lipstick, a mystic look painted in her single eye. Hanging below her on an array of strings, a star jubilant and beaming with a bright eyed fish and a playful seahorse. I picked up the moon, her star and her creatures, and I tucked them away into a dark night stand. I put out their light. I do not yet know if I will burn them or let their faces collect dust when all of this is said and done and I have moved on. I guess a death by dust or ashes is the same fate anyway. Strange, isn't it? The sun never got a face. So that's my first piece um, for y'all. <laughs> um, yeah, um, that was just about like this present that I had gotten um, from, from a lover long, long ago. Um, and just kind of, you know, what that gift meant to me and stuff, um, and what it, you know, kind of meant to lose it as well. Um, so that being said, I wrote this other one, if I can <laughs> remember where it is. Oh, yeah, so I wrote this other piece that, for some reason, I, I stay saying that I don't write as much as I used to, but I, like, do write, but I just forget that I, like, wrote things, so they're just, like, tucked away in my notes, um, so I found this piece that I had written, um, a couple of months ago. So this is called, um, you are the son of your own universe. Um, and it is, it was inspired by a visual artist who, uh, makes just really awesome, like art about like healing yourself and like self-love and stuff like that. Um, and the artist's name is Yumi Sakugawa, if I am pronouncing that correctly. So, yeah. This is that, um, and it's kind of in conversation with the last piece. Last night, I had a dream that I laid with a man and I saw your face. The man's skin was dark as earth. His teeth were made of starlight. I kissed his celestial smile and though he tasted divine, in this dream, his love did not swallow me. After we finished, in the sleepy dusk that settles after a red and screaming sunset, I pulled away from him laughing as I walked across his room. I knew that he would be there when I returned. I glanced up from my carefree joy where I noticed a gift I had been given many years ago that had long since gathered dust. You smiled at me, an old friend I never thought I'd see again. I had prayed to my ancestors for you in the waking world, my heart ached for you for eons. As I held you in my hands, your eyelashes fluttered, your pupils darted back and forth like an ancient clock. You gazed up at me with bright and open eyes. Your full, wholesome grin was genuine and content. As I admired you, green tidal waves and spindly vines grazed your face in play. No strings to bind you left in sight. I only saw you for a moment, but your brilliance answered all of my questions about our future. I was content to know you were fulfilled. In that instant, I awoke, and I remembered the night I put out your light. That fateful dusk, as purple dark descended, you gave the moon one final embrace, and I recited poems over your grave before I extinguished your eclipse. In your last moments, and in my mortal grief, I never turned to see your shining face. I was too entranced by moonlight and her promises, 
all the star tales I would never catch and all of the creatures I would never see again. Your face pressed to the cold dark ground as I set ablaze your most precious union. Try as I did, only half of your faces burned, half my fate a blackout, the other illuminated with endless possibility. Still, I sometimes wonder what this could mean. How many nights did you sit, pressed and content against my bedroom wall as I admired the moon that you illuminated? How naive was I, just a boy skipping stones and begging the moon to come and play? I never realized that you were always my brightest star. Woo. So yeah, that was my second one. Um, I don't know if that made sense, but that's what I'm contributing today. Um, yeah, so let's see. I have really just one new one that's kind of a completely different change of pace. Um, but I found this one that I had written just like um, yeah, it's like a completely different mood. This is like, I guess, more of a political poem. Um, but I kind of just wrote about kind of like my complicated relationship with the Spanish language um, as someone who identifies as like a Chicano and kind of like, yeah, it's really complicated. I feel like the, the poem says everything that um, I kind of feel like saying right now. So yeah, this is kind of, this is what it is. Um, I, a working title is An Etymology of a Chicano. My Spanish crossed the border to get here. A Mexican accent hidden beneath my mother's tongue when she answered, I am American to a border patrol agent at age 15. In 1984, her light skin and dyed blonde hair passed the citizenship test. My Spanish fell between the cracks of Me Mexico's labor market and into the arms of Reagan's amnesty. When they dropped me at the foot of America's doorstep, English didn't want me. Escondido entre, entre libros de ingles. In 2008, my fluent but unrooted mouth passes the English as a second language test. I am never asked to prove myself again. From third grade onward, my English teachers praise my gifted and talented American tongue while they lay the tracks for my brown siblings' vocational classes or prison beds. By fifth grade, my own culture doesn't want me anymore. My brothers and sisters sneer at my now faulty Spanish. My mom says that it's my fault too, Noel. My sad brown mouth will swallow their laughter into silence, and I dare not speak my mother tongue again for five years. I allow English to harden me, sharpen my accent, sharpen my accents um, into a harsh, I did not finish this line, <laughs> um, whitewashing my surname into Vela. I reacquaint myself with the candlewick softness of my mother tongue at age 15, and remember my surname is pronounced Vela. My Mexicanidad is the pro product of Spanish rape and indigenous genocide. My bastard son of a tongue, los españoles thought only good for taming, I have inherited all of the colonial baggage and none of the riches. I claim neither Colon's legacy as my pride nor Mexican nor Mexica pyramids as my birthright. My struggle and my kinship are different. Soy ni de aquí ni de allá, although I honor the native ancestors in my blood who did everything for me to survive. I am no longer afraid to admit that along the way, many of my ties have been cut and cannot be recovered. My indigenous ancestors did not keep records when they were running for their lives. My family tree is less a bramble of strong branches waiting with clues my ancestors left for me to discover. My genealogy is more seeds scattered in the wind with a prayer for wherever they may fall. And isn't that beautiful too? I cannot trace my lineage past my grandparents half deceased because my people have been ravaged by cancer by alcoholism-induced dementia and intragenerational trauma my living grandmother would rather die with than speak. There is nothing romantic about this. My brown skin is my only proof that blood was spilled and now I exist, a collateral existence, a brutal, a brutal beginning, ni de aquí ni de allá. I am a countryless being that does not hunger for forced repatriation or reconquista. This is my truth and mine alone. I will not bastardize my good ancestors by hiding or denying it 
and I will not use my truth to compete with other oppressed peoples. And that's what I got this far. So hot take, <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, so that's all I really had for you all today. The rest of my pieces are like old. So um, yeah, that's what I got. I hope you all enjoy. <laughs> I like fall in love with Mateo every time I hear him do poetry. Just every time. I'm just like, oh, 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 I'm in love. Okay. All right. This is fine. This is fine. This is okay. Um, my heart was just like, ache, ache, ache all love, Mateo. Um, cool. Um, well, we have a dope feature, a dope feature coming to the mic, and I have the honor to introduce her i i feel unworthy but hella worthy all at the same time um we got suzy q suzy q smith she is an award-winning artist activist and educator who lives in denver colorado her most recent collections of poems do, 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 a gospel of bones this has been a magical book that i and my altar have been just enjoying so much um it is available from alternative alternating alternating my english is not very good today alternating current press i'm sure that she can correct as well and forthcoming collection poems for the end of the world will be available from finishing line press in june 21 so basically Suzy Q just gonna get all my money. Um, I am very honored to have Suzy Q here. She is magical and holy, and I am very blessed to have learned so much for her. And yeah, y'all are just y'all just blessed to have this. Um, and yeah, Suzy Q Smith, please give us all the magic and words you got for us. Oh, thank you for that beautiful introduction, Bri. Okay. Um, <laughs> And thank you for opening us up with your poems this evening. This has been beautiful. It's so nice to see you. And it's so nice to see, like hearing Mateo's words. Oh my goodness. Hearing Imogen, it's, that was, those are some beautiful poems that I heard. And Deanna, reading for your first time. I feel like it's just such an honor that I get to be present anytime it's someone's first time, especially. And then your poems were so beautiful. So I'm just feeling really, really lucky to be here tonight. Um, I'm Susie Q. Smith, she, her, hers. I live in Denver, Colorado. It's where I've been this whole time. Um, so originally uh, raised in Park Hill. Um, and that is the place that I generally refer to as home, most specifically my Nana's house. <laughs> that is, um, where, I, where I'm from. So I'm gonna read you some poems tonight. I'm not sure exactly where we are on time. So I think whenever it's time for me to hush, just let me know that it's time to hush. Um, and I feel like spirit will let me know when it's time to hush too. Um, also, Bree is also from Park Hill. So we're going to do a quick little pork hill. <laughs> uh, repping that 80207. So um, thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start out with a couple of poems. So as, as Bree mentioned, I have a couple of new books. Um, one that just came out and another that is coming out in a couple of months. So the one that's out now is A Gospel of Bones, and I'll read a little bit of that. And then also the next one is Poems for the End of the World, and I'll read a little bit of that, and I'll talk a little bit about kind of what that, what that means and like, what is the end of the world? Um, so we'll talk about that as well. But mostly I think I just wanna read um, some love poems, right? And uh, poems about love for my friends, love for my family because I think that we, they don't get poems often enough, right? We always hear all these romantic love poems and I don't really write those too often. Um, but I write love poems and gratitude poems and celebration poems for the homies regularly. <laughs> That's part of my living practice and they are part of my living practice and they are part of the people on uh, the team of people who keep me alive and well. So um, I'm gonna start with this piece that is in Poems for the End of the World and this poem is called, An Open Letter to Those Who Would Come for My Joy. Here, have it. Take as much as you need. I'm saying, you need it. I got it, I'm making more, watch. 
In the oven window, the biscuits rise and you smell that. Stir this honey into the butter. See, you ain't got to steal from me. My joy laughs at anybody who thinks she don't know her address. She comes home stumble drunk and laughing, full of stories every time. You got your own joy. She and my joy are friends already. They play in the sprinklers and braid each other's hair every Thursday. They shout compliments to each other across streets. Girl, you wearing that dress don't hurt nobody. The choreography they made up in middle school still gets busted out on dance floors like it's 1990 something until they fall into each other out of breath laughing. Look, these biscuits are ready. Get you a plate later. I'll teach you how to make them. Uh, this next poem, Amidst the Joy, um, and the many reasons I've had to get good at making it, right? Um, I'm thinking heavily about Micaiah Bryant. Um, and so many people who unnecessarily die uh, at the hands of the state. And so uh, this poem is called, You Scared. If fear is an accepted legal defense for murder, how many times might I have killed? How many times have I quaked and trembled? How many times have I been the only woman in the room? The only black person in the room, the only black woman in the room. How many times has that fear been justified? See history, see yesterday. Imagine if I defended myself with fire next time, every time. How many fears could I kill in a day? How many shadows would bleed out? You scared. Me too. Um, whew, I didn't know I was going to read this poem tonight, but it's deciding sometimes when I, you know, I always make these lists and then the poems say, guess what? They come knocking at my teeth and the list doesn't matter anymore. Um, so we're going to dive right into it. <laughs> I would, this is sweet back. When Chris Dorner trained his gun on the LAPD, when he released a manifesto addressed to America, subject, last resort, we knew it was clearly a suicide note. I take no joy in the blood on his hands nor his burnt body, but it comes as no shock that some policemen look like overseers even now. So yes, when he quoted D.H. Lawrence, I never saw a wild thing feel sorry for itself. I wanted to tell him to run. Not because he was innocent, but even the foreshadow of defeat is enough to awaken the adrenaline when your bones remember the burning. I wanted to tell him to run, not for himself nor his own iron hands, but for Fred Hampton and Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. and Amadou Diallo and Troy Davis and Trayvon Martin and Paul Childs and Ramarley Graham and Sean Bell and Oscar Grant and Rakia Boyd and Timothy Stansbury and Orlando Barlow and Aaron Campbell and Victor Steen and Stephen Washington and Alonzo Ashley and Wendell Allen and Ronald Madison and Ayanna Jones and Marvin Booker and James Brissett and John Crawford III and Eric Garner and Barbara Dawson and Mike Brown and Tamir Rice and Walter Scott and Cameron Tillman and Eric Harris and Sandra Bland and Alton Sterling and Philando Castile and Alva Brazil and so many more names that I will never know and I did not know any of these people but damn that they couldn't have all been my family and I know they say it's not a war but damn if I don't feel like an insurgent sometimes and no I've never killed anyone but have long since admitted that I could I mean America you got big guns. I ain't scared though, not with this working womb. America, you thought the Black Panther free breakfast program was scary. You ain't met me yet. I mean, we've been through a lot, America. I think that now, now for every one of our children you allow to be murdered, I will make two with brothers gully as they come, all grit and swagger and knuckle and earth and gleam, beards all unapologizing, brothers who won't smile at you, brothers who ain't never been afraid of you, brothers who smell just like the sun. We will raise our babies together Together, like militia ticking, we will detonate them on your college campuses, at your job, in your neighborhood. We will suck up all the financial aid. We will teach Fred Hampton in the classrooms until his blood can stop screaming. You don't want it with we, America. We, black mothers, are angry as ever, are fertile as ever, and unafraid of our children. I'm not leaving, America. We will take over the schools and send your daughters home smiling like Patty Hearst, America. You feeling me now? 
You fearing me now? Might even have your babies, America. They will be black too. America, this is a war. America, I will send my sons to all your corners. You will be needing their light. America, this is no manifesto. This is a love poem. Making love is the only way I know how to save you. Your hatred and fear are a cancer. Your teeth are rotting from your head. America, now is the time to call on whatever God you pray to. Give thanks for my beautiful sons. Yes, there will be sons, black sons, and we will call them all Jamal and Rakim, and we will love them. We will love them. We're not dying, America. We will live forever. Thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna breathe in aloud a little bit. Um, I did not know that that poem was gonna happen on this particular evening, but the poem decides sometimes, and that's how that goes. And I had to say those things. Whew. So. That's sweet, that. I'm gonna keep reading poems. Um, the world ends a lot of ways. So I'm gonna read a little bit from Poems for the End of the World. And um, I don't know if anyone has ever been through a breakup before, or is that just me? Anybody ever been through a breakup, ever had your heart broken, maybe once or twice, a little bit, a little touch, a little hair. And it does feel very much like the end of the world when it happens. Um, and so this poem is called Breakup Poem Number 5011. Men who don't love me, I could buy by the barrel. Those who want the company of my skin and silence, I lose count before breakfast. My last breakup, I told him, I'm glad we caught it early, like it was a cancer and not a love. The one before him, I said, I really dodged a bullet this time. <laughs> My homegirls never believe me when I say the men don't love me because they actually can't imagine anyone not loving me. I feel the same way about them and ain't that love the purest kind. Uh, and in the tradition of poems to the homies, uh, this one is called Homegirl. Homegirl, noun, one. A girl or woman from one's own neighborhood or hometown. In my neighborhood, women walk like they are their own favorite songs. The way my beautiful aunties laugh and sway, I'm sure the world belongs to the music of their steps. I practice this walk when no one is looking. You ain't grown. <laughs> I watch the way my grandmother walks to her sister's house at night, carrying a stick for stray dogs, she tells us, or heavy-handed men who refuse to leave and praying all the way. She tells us to stay together while we wait for her outside. We do. Two, an inner city girl or woman. I'm seven and the boy across the street calls me a home girl. We both think this is an insult. My sister laughs, head back and throaty when I come home crying. Three, a girl or woman who is a friend. In middle school, my best friend father says that everything north of a certain avenue where my house is, is a ghetto and should be burned to the ground. She and I argue about whether or not her father is racist. I take everything the wrong way. Four, see around the way girl. Lisa, Angela, Pamela, Renee, LL Cool J praises the girls with bamboo earrings and shining lip gloss. My grandmother won't let me pierce my ears, says marking up their bodies is the first sign that people are separating themselves from God. I am tucking my hand-me-down bell bottoms into my socks and praying no one sees. Five, a compound word meaning home and girl. Don't nobody like you anyway, Myron. My throat curling into a fist, my legs pumping high noon. I swing in a furious tornado at the boy who pushed me off my bike. The roar and thrum of my block boiling, beating him into a wall of rose bushes. I bet he still remembers my name. I hope he still feels a sting every time he balls a fist. Six, a female member of a peer group or gang. My homegirl tells me about a man breaking into her house freshly after her divorce when her children were little and tucked into their beds. She held the man at gunpoint at her kitchen table, brewed a pot of coffee while they waited for police. Seven, plural noun, homegirls. My homegirls and I say homegirl like it belongs to us, like an invention or inheritance. Either way, we've had that shit since like 85 and we brought it with us. 
A man broke my heart and my homegirl hexed his ass in a text message. Ain't heard from him again. A man broke my homegirl's heart and I swallowed his name. Ain't heard from him again. My homegirl made a fire in the backyard and we threw our dead into it. We survived. My homegirls and I, you got to get through me first. My homegirls and I, how I got over every other name too toothless to pass down to our daughters who will carry the sticks, the crayons, the fires, the gloss, the fists, the roses, the guns, the coffee, the men, the keys, the babies, the medicine, the front doors, the back doors, the windows, the words, each other, each other, each other other, each other, each other. If you do not have some homegirls, highly recommend that you get some. <laughs> they keep me alive regularly. So shout out to all of my beloved ones who are watching right now. I'm so glad that you're here and in my life. And I miss you. And uh, I want us all to sleep in a giant pile like where the wild things are because I miss you so much. <laughs> I think we're at that point of the pandemic where I'm just like, oh, let's just all hug each other forever. <laughs> Currently living in my heart. Um, so this is a, a little poem. This one's from A Gospel of Bones. And this is about the tiny little microaggressions that happen in like a regular day, right? So this is part of like what makes me love quarantine life. Where I'm like, you know what? I don't need to go anywhere. I could skip all the microaggressions that happen amongst strangers. So this is called Some People Like Me Better As An Idea. The woman downtown in the coffee shop fills her face with alarm. You are the future I am afraid of. What if I'm evaporating into the past? The woman on the elevator wants to know if I live here. What if I become everything I have already assumed you are? The woman across the street calls the police to report my presence. Why do you have to tell the whole internet every time these shaking fingers dial 911? The woman in the mail room wants to know how I got this job. Can't this fear be between us? Somebody's got to do something about all this fear. The woman at the suburban mall closes the door when she sees me approach. Don't you feel me feeling it? Isn't it your job to feel my feelings? The woman at the bar runs her hands through my hair. Isn't that solidarity? Don't you call that intersectional? The woman at the airport tries to cut the line why can't you just stand a few blocks behind me where I don't have to see you? The woman at the bar runs her hands along my backside. Can't you be a little ugly or at least try to be my version of pretty? The woman on the sidewalk, afraid to look up. Why don't you smile first or move out the way? Why are you always in the way? Why aren't you sorry for scaring me? What if I start to cry? What will you do? Don't you know my tears get people like you killed? This poem is called, You Can't Take Us Anywhere. Uh, and this is about a night out in the club in Denver, Colorado. Um, and it was a night in which uh, it was hip hop in one room and dubstep in the other room and uh, adventures abounded. And so it was an odd night and I had to record it in this poem. So uh, this is called, You Can't Take Us Anywhere. Me and B on the dance floor with various other shades of people, checkered flannel shirts, cursive tattoos, lilting drunk belly out, long legged leather vest, headband, lace dress. What season even is this? Heads bob, eyes scan for heat. One spindly blonde, hair swinging in her face, emerges from the throng, throws herself onto the wall, arms out, long wide, pressing, gyrating her neck mostly, but get it how you live. We are mostly swaying to hip hop hits from the early 2000s. They are mostly the wrong ones. We are hungry, almost begging for beats that demand our sweat, the dropping of hips, not these damn near slow jams, easy enough for the girl on the wall, unaffected by rhythm or any other garden variety inebriate to attempt to interpret into some kind of movement. Meantime, me and B, so magic, we invisible, arms crossed, soul and salt in my stare. We don't check our coats to be insincere. I finally hear it's boning biggie biggie it's boning biggie biggie the opening bars it's boning biggie biggie to notorious thugs yo that's my shit and me and b throw our hands in the air armed and dangerous ain't too many can bang with us and hold we are alive we are seen we point at the dj i see you i see you he sees us back plays the jt money classic who that and the asses commence to bounce now i know i am loved give these glistening hype joy to the whole room we shoulder bolt roll body rock bounce Live and electric, even the air is ours until 
I spin and see a tall drink of who left the gate open, wearing a trench coat. He is standing alone in the corner, juggling glow in the dark bowling pins. In the next corner, a young lady hula hooping DJ still playing JT money. And this might be the most Denver shit I have ever seen in my life. B leans in to point a dude next to us. He looks like old boy from Don't Be a Menace. I spin again so hard to stop laughing so hard at the accuracy and I don't want to hurt his feelings. Then approaching from the door is a broad grin white kid. His hair dyed Kool-Aid red and woven into dreadlocks the size of baguettes. They almost swing as he walks toward me flashing his platinum grill i am howling b is low twerking to keep from laughing too i am hollering at the wind and the drum that brought us here tonight when we make our exit we are approached by a clenched jaw big bodied mostly shaved blonde head my fist tight for whatever this is about to be he says i'm sorry to bother you but i just really love your energy i'm really tripping hard right now but i just had to tell you that he folds his fist chin into his pocket chest he means it on the ride home, I laugh and lament the precious disgust of the story my body told tonight. Arms crossed, fist balling, fight, hands up, ass drop, surrender, impossible to sustain, impossible to defend, a home or a square inch of earth for a body or a breath, but sometimes for the length of two songs, even the air is ours. Um, I'm gonna read just a couple more, if that's cool. I have no idea what time is right now. Um, oh, I have lots of time. Okay. I have lots of time. So maybe I'm going to read slower. I'm trying to like, like, oh, I want to read this one. And then this one, and then poems like decide that they want to show up um, and surprise me. Um, oh, I'm already for this one. I think I'm, I think I'm ready for this one. So um, this poem is, is part of the poems for the end of the world series. Um, and it's called The World Ends and Ends. Again, you know, the world ends and begins in many ways. Um, and so this is that. Me and my cousin laughing about the perfect shade thrown by old ladies. I like how you had your hair yesterday. <laughs> that dress don't leave much to the imagination. Did you mean to go that short? You know, it's a better color for you. Her friend interjects, says shade from old men hits harder. My cousin says, we wouldn't know. We don't have any old men in our family. My cousin is in town for a funeral. Again, we have learned to mourn. We have learned to laugh and cry in a single sentence. My cousin's father died days before her birthday. Her birthday. She wants me to hear her freestyle. She left rehab to come to the funeral. She's afraid to rap for me because I'm a serious poet, she says. I tell her I can pull up instrumentals on my phone. I step outside with her while she smokes her cigarette and raps. She's leaving a voicemail for someone I don't know. Someone she says owes her money. Her freestyle is mostly about the debt she is trying to collect. She reminds him that she knows where his mama stays. Her language is sharp. She blushes when two old white ladies walk past looking shocked. We look at each other again and laugh like when we were little girls. She finds her rhythm again. Over there, she is pointing, is where my granny got her first DUI. And over there, she is pointing again, is where I got my first DUI, her birthday. Her daddy just died, her birthday. The bar has cut her off, her birthday. She loves everyone except that must, whose name I don't know. She wipes her face and says, we not doing this today. I say, go ahead and cry, cousin. She asked me to take her to get weed so she can be happy again. My cousin is a language I understand. I say, no. She snatches drinks from the table and they are half gone before we can stop her. She laughs, she thinks she's slick. She is slippery as age and sobriety. We got good calluses for grip. We hold each other in prayer, in hope, in resignation, in memory. I hug my cousin, say she is still magnificent and I still see her. I hug her son, her nephew, say she wasn't always like this. Me and my cousins stayed up late in my auntie's basement, practicing our dance routines. Summer, the choreographer, Tammy, the ballerina, me and Raven, the youngest, mostly doing what they said, but put our own spin on the snake, shaking our shapeless hips, pinched our nostrils together and sucked them in while we did the cabbage patch, took turns dancing in the circle, shouting, go, go, 
go until it was go Susie, go Susie, go, go, go Susie. And I would get shy and say, I didn't want to dance no more. And sometimes we could hear the grown folks yelling at each other upstairs, but we would turn up the music and keep dancing, playing Janet Jackson until the tape warped, playing Whitney Houston until the tape warped, until somebody yelled at us for to shut up and go to bed and don't make me come down these stairs. We laugh and cry in a single sentence. We lose and find our rhythm in a single bar. We live while the world ends and ends and ends. Um, this next poem is called Sing Over the Bones. This is also in Poems for the End of the World. And this is what we call the black girl blues. Ain't called it depression so much as Tuesday. When we forget the promise of Saturday night sweat and Sunday morning song. When we forget to call tomorrow holy cause it's another hill to climb. When today leaves bruises, catches round our throats and leaves our voices whispers. When we forget to rebuke the madness and call it the truth, we must remember to say to ourselves, you are not crazy. Resist when they snap at you to stretch your scabbed skin back over your bones. You will grow it anew every time. If your veins are easy to see, this does not mean that you are easy to kill, only that your life is impossible to ignore. You are a bleeding sun. When the calluses form, tear your skin from its meat peel yourself open and let them smell the fruit of you spill into every mouth that speaks your name stain their fingers you you magnificent point of light a swallowing supernova you are hammer and pickaxe belly full of lava you are a forever thing when dark has forgotten its own weakness you are flame dancing it into hush you are a blistering miracle, sun and sand tangled into indistinguishable horizon, hum, and the earth will keep on course. You song, you lovely, you yes, you fiery stone mouth, you fleshy mirror, you pulpy always, you marvelous in your quest and glorious in pursuit of humble corners, you worship, you god child, you queen of margins and handwritten notes. There is nothing wrong with you. You are a unicorn in a herd of goldfish muddying the pond and no one has learned yet to sing your name. You star, you stone, you shine, you always, you inextinguishable, you perfect, you perfect. And I think I will close with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read maybe one more, maybe one more. I feel like, I feel like I could possibly read maybe one more. I, you said I have like a till. I'm 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 gonna keep going. I got a couple more poems. I got a couple more. Let me sip on this water real quick, y'all. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you look at this picture of Jimi Hendrix while I drink a little bit of water. I do have poems for days. I do. I could pretend I don't, but I also want to share the mic, you know. Um, and so, whoo. I haven't read this one for a little while, so I think it'll be fun. Um, so this is this is the closing poem in A Gospel of Bones called Black Rage in Four Part Harmony. Um, and I haven't read it for a little while, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so I'm going to read Black Rage in Four Part Harmony. One, I am easy black, indie black. Light black, like black light, your only black employee. Want me to be your soundtrack? Want me to give you permission? Want to touch my hair? Want to end of summer? Compare skin tones? I always lose. Still blacker than you. You will follow me through the store. Offer to hold my things at the counter until I am ready to check out, but you will still ride the elevator and probably not clutch your purse. I listen to gangster rap loud with the windows down when I drive through your neighborhood. I have stolen your boyfriends on purpose or at least glances from them to shame you. I have balled up my tongue in a Gatling gun, spit sour nickels into a sack and hit you with it. It never lashes the same way as racial slurs no matter how hard I whip my words too. My grandmother instructed us all hard molasses the first time strangers referred to us as Negro children. 
is a word we had not heard before. Around this house, we are black. She spoke easy as hot comb smoking, smooth blue magic, sharp surprise of burnt ears and stinging sit stills around our Sunday afternoon table. We used to smile into each other's black faces. We laughed magnificent black and loved each other with an unbreakable blackness. My mother still wants to believe that I could white the same way. A flash of teeth, a sprinkle of freckle. I tell her that most white people only want me white when they want to win an argument. Strangers still ask me sometimes what I am. They often preface the question with, I mean, I can see you have some black in you. I laugh blackly, not minding the question so much as their expectation of an answer. I'm the end of the pool that no one is afraid of until the bottom drops out. Sometimes this light skin gets me invited to parties that I am not really welcome at. Three, why are you so mad? Why are you so mad? Why you got a chip on your shoulder? Why are you so mad? Why you can't just swallow stones till you stop being hungry? Why you can't just smile? Why you can't just dance? Why you can't just drink? I mean, we made you an exception. We let you slide. We might even let you pass. So why you gotta be so mad? Why you got your chest puffed up after we put the fire hoses away? Why you can't just shake your head and suck your teeth and look to your own and forget that everybody is your own? Why you can't just keep it pushing? Why you can't just shuck? Why you can't just shrug? Why you can't just laugh? We were only joking all, present company excluded all. But you're not like that, Susie. I mean, all I said was ghetto. All I said was ratchet. All I said was nappy. Why you can't just relax? Why you can't just press and curl? Why you can't just pop your booty? Why you can't just drop it? Everybody's dropping it. Why are you so mad? Why are you so mad? Why are you so mad? Why are you so black? Four. There are three basic ways to make a noose. The first is to run the tail of the rope through a fixed loop. The second and most common way is to tie a simple knot around the standing part of the rope. When pulled, the knot side pulls closes the loop like the heel of a hand pressed against an easy throat or a gate left foolishly swinging open. The third is the same as the second, except that pulling the knot will open the loop like the string on a yo-yo, but this is usually only done by mistake. This is not a promise, only finger and thumb unraveling, a tongue tying and untying interlaced fingers and knots. It is hushed whispers over a fledgling tree that everyone knows was watered with blood, except, of course, the tree wonders why her arms grow out so snatching, why she shake them loose when they fool enough to climb, menacing into her Afro leaves, why everyone knows she is too hungry a place for their children to swing. Black people, once free, did not gather in mobs and hunt despite all the same access to trees and rope. And I think I'll close with that one this evening. Thank you all for listening and thank you for being here. I have been Susie Q. Smith. I shall continue to be after this. And thank you again to Sacred Voices. Thank you to, for inviting me. Thank you for organizing. Thank you for keeping this alive. And thank you to everyone who's listening and to all the poets who are sharing tonight. It is my honor to share the space with you. Cries, cries really. It's so hard to listen to Susie Q and not cry. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful and magical. And wow, that is lovely. Um, I'm going to read a quick poem, um, and then we're going to get into our next poet. And it's very funny because this quick poem is low-key somehow about Susie Q, and it's dope. The first time that I ever, what was it? Was it with Carrie Joy or Bianca McCann? There's something just about the way Black women can command the room. How their words say over to me like the sweetest gesture of, I see you. Maybe it was because that was the safest I've ever been seen by someone who looks like me. The first time that I wondered, was it Bobby or Susie that found rhythm inside of me, persuaded it to come out onto paper and say, hello. They showed me the deadliest weapon to have was my tongue. The first time that my excitement filled me was the we cut heads bellow of Slam Nuba or Tolua soft, gentle voice explaining to me what sugar cane tastes like. They became a space of worship, both body and space. I've convinced myself through them this is how poets are made. 
the first time that I loved? Was it through different poets seeing me, hearing me, and urging me to become one? And I find myself before any mic offering up smoke and praise to the ones who have paved the way for me. Maxie, my poem, my lovely poem. <laughs> I'm, al I'm always crying, so I guess this is this is it. <laughs> All right, we got coming up to the mic. Tyrone, you ready? You ready to, to share? I have octopus arms, y'all. Hello. Hey. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm ready to share. All righty. Let's do right. it. Yeah. Hello, I'm Tyrone Ross Thompson, a wine woman Nespers of the Columbia River and a future MFA Institute of American Indian Arts student. And the following is called Fish Ladder and Horsemanship. Who has the authority to decide what ancestors needed? Decolonized by divided history, the blessings of wolf capitalism, the chances of imperialism. I remember infant's heart failure and the fury after reading the eulogy and not even told of the funeral. I remember a wreck cars aftermath in the ditch. And another time, finding the lifeless body and various others varied by suicide, violence, and slow death. Is the wool with caskets less valuable because of bias and false wealth? It took years to accept family loss and face an addiction, the disease and recovery regret, lost connection while rebuilding with family, while searching through history, recite with Shawnee humanity. Nonetheless, Tanino, the Washington side of Slila Falls and source of redemption, divine, the divine center of historical importance through melanin and blood vessels, a remembrance, complete warfare and spiritual survival. And from here, the trail started of original kinship represent at the banks of the river at Wulula near the confluence where 2,500 nurse purse showed their horsemanship and non-treaty defiance. 165 years of assimilation before the constant one-upmanship, before the insistent validation. Any village people visited from Land of the Butterflies to Tanaino, where people are accepted. Before the colonial seal, sincere nobility, the hearts of wool by matched millennial with unmatched dignity. Hunway had the power of song and foretold of life changing. Her symbols we acknowledge and hold. Through sinew and symbols, a letter to the creator, Slyla Falls Fish Committee, its memory is vivid. The struggle for basic dignity and power, the tenants' calm and inpatient urgency, what into release for Washani humanity. History as deep as obsidian, in 200 YM wars supported Kamayakin, and constantly heard of these stories and fear of responsibility. At times, I didn't want this accountability. 1867, a decade after the war, a YM dreamer danced at Slilo and predicted a canal that would flood the five islands and a home buried on March 10, 1957. And born two centuries too late is a word stated for reevaluation of resentment of divide and conquer, a century's injury and confliction. Colonial systemic oppression often caused moments of doubt, the memory neglected and death caused repression, created and living by survivor's remorse, the pain remnant unknown future course. Nevertheless, the lineage from power in place, from isolation to redemption, riding my own collective drummers and dreamers with the goal of building collective power. And thank you for your time. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, sorry. I was water. <laughs> and I was like, ah, cool. Um, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, 
cool. We got Barbara coming up next then. Is Barbara here? Hello. Hey. Hey guys. My name's Barbara. I'm just gonna read you a few different things and see how far I get in 10 minutes. A poet sat beneath a tree and wrote a little riddle, a lore that tore the forehead off a girl who played the fiddle. The devil came with horns and the angels dropped a feather. They said, you'll find the balance. And she did, cause she was clever. She rode her bike through city streets and swam in murky rivers. She ran until her toes bled, learned the takers from the givers. She planned to slow it down, took all the love a boy would give her, then gave her heart to freedom cause the truth could always live there. Saw the writing on the walls and scribbled in her notebook used the truth to rattle all the shadows in her outlook, found some puzzle pieces in the cracks beneath the concrete and hid in quiet doorways, watching seeds blossom on repeat. Yeah. All right, this next one is a few different parts. It's called Puzzle Too Thick. There was a hole in the blinds and I could see right through, inside to the heart of you. Leather belt pulling, painted toes curling, throwing me through the window heart. Shattered heart unfurling, deep despair sliced and throwed, flying through each strand of her hair bled true. Your hands held hard, each broken shard, sharp cold splitting fold, soul sold. That pulsing moment like a shot in the night, piercing through glass, splicing my sight, fragmented visions, igniting blazing prisons cold love carved into future visions. I drove away back through the shadows like long thin lines which made up fences I can't cross back. I walked slowly to the car but surely through memories like vines which tugged my insides. They will never pull me hard enough. I stood still and looked within moving forward pulled me back inside my tears falling softly saturating skin with the waters of pain. As the wheels turn, my feet pound pavement and my tears dry up, dry me up, lift me up, lift me up. Shaking breath and wrenching spine, squeezing out the madness and freezing drops of sadness, rushing just for stillness. Guess I've had less. Quiet burst the bubble, volume up. Foot to pedal, squeezing time, filling up my bucket, new ways to say fuck it. Screaming from silence, waiting for that luck hit. Knock me to my feet, ante up. Warm eyes on mine, you had to send me vibes. Melting frozen feelings, bring back my mind reeling. What is fate when dreaming, feet up to the ceiling? Just hold my hand and fill my cup, like that would be enough. Empty heart, beating footsteps into the past. A ghost grief, mourning for another woman's loss. She whispers darkness into the ears of another. He walks unharnessed, but freedom is not always free. Belly of stone sinking further towards the future. A spirit thief left no trace of the path to follow. He carves shadows behind the body of another. She caresses her scars because wounds are her guiding light. Eyes of fire looking right up to the sky. A human cry sends shivers through every cloud. They leave the love alone. This next one is called Mother's Summons. There's a seat that's growing through the hot concrete, buried for ages with the monsters underneath, pushed so far below every last worm and rock, frozen and sewn behind the broken lock. Picking through the pins, rusty, bent, and sharp. Sprouting through the shackles, she strums the prickling harp. Drumming thunder with the raindrops, pulling water through the roots. Dew drops from the ether to feed her stolen fruits. Rising past the soil, mud curling through her veins, replenishing her branches, loosening the reins. Oh, Father, I have held my tongue, caged the song of a million birds. It's time I freed me one. Oh, mother, when each day is done, I'll ride the wind beyond the gate, sowing seeds I've just begun. 
There's still thunder on the mountain and fire in the sky, colored by tomorrows and echoed till we die. Oh, sister, don't you think the time has come to hear the heart of every broken flower and the silent beat of a thousand drums? Oh, brother, the weight bears down in tons. Release the heavy burdens. Kiss the wounds of your daughters and your sons. Okay, this is my last one I'm gonna do. It's more of a love poem. On fingers first touch, the honey of a million bees buzzed beneath my skin, through my soul but deeper in. A kiss to my forehead wrapped a thousand arms around every curve of my heart, holding me still within the moving ocean of my tears. Your head upon my belly released every bird caged, wound up in my roots, unbound in sky, painted with the colors of forgotten tomorrows. And your eyes chased horses around my fire, pounding familiar rhythm into the stars. And your wounds, your words, water from my fears, flooding out the trembling. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the virtual snaps and claps. Thank you so much. Cool. I believe up next we have, I believe it's Ford. I think it was Catherine at one point and then it changed to Ford. I like this evolution. Wait, I think we got Ford, yeah? Yep, that's me. I, I am extremely against Facebook. So I try to use other people's accounts whenever, whenever possible to do stuff like this. So I hope there was as little confusion as possible. I love it. All right, so first I have a poem called Tested. It's about uh, my hatred for standardized testing, but not the process overall, more the factor that you have to abide by a time limit, uh, which I think in certain situations can be crushing of uh, critical thinking because you're under that pressure. So without further ado, here it is. I face another problem. The problem is I trace another problem now. The problem so they won't debate. Gotta solve another problem lest I be robbed of my future examined at a troublesome rate. The numbers, they encumber me pulling asunder the hopes of those who dare to dream, barring possibilities. Fibonacci spirals of insanity, the marks on my paper are belying my humanity. Now, computing angles, I tangle my thoughts of the future and the angle of the path they will take. I'm now strangled by repression of expression and regret in every answer to these questions I make. This problematic slog of God-forsaken problems causes pain as my brain is washed in violation of creative capacity, disabling my path to see the way forward in ways other than mathematically based. My race against the clock defacing my paper with a paceless onslaught, guessing all the rest. This test is unfair education all the race with a time limit there. Comprehension is senselessly rendered in endless descending columns of white and black. The presenters dispensing forever these tests out for tender and gender blended masses to join the stack. My fate, despite my work, now lies innately with the work on my paper. I slave to please the jerks who run society, filled with disingenuity when they purport a dream yet place others face in the dirt. Can't think outside the box, because the box is the problem subject to equations so or the docs. My response is an exasperated answer that fits in within a bubble with the goal to grossly approximate my competence, compiling with lack of patience, a flotsamation on my intellect, another patient observer waiting for my number to be heard from the sea of people dissipated to no more than calculations. This form is a reminder to relentlessly adhere and conform to the jaded minds of yesteryear. My form, my style is torn from my hands as I fill out another form subject to machine scans. What do I gain? What do I earn from this lotteries. All my learning is turned into monotony. My worth as a person is burned in this hypocrisy as wealthy men pretend and talk of meritocracy. Reality says and technicality is sound in the crowded mound to be put into a category. The questions press on, confounding the answers, bouncing down to the ground, surround my thin security with each category. More on this exam, I am for more, and I stand torn up at its formality. As bland letters move from my mind to my hand, 
in no room for scorn, a perfect form, it's unrealistic necessity, how we like to stop the clock. But as it ticks on, my thoughts are gone for some by systematically brought to examination, revocate an individuality. Is it really any wonder that I'm so distraught by this test? Instead of progressing, we regress to a mess that's depressed, insipid, coalescing to a collection of numbers encumbered by society to face another problem in complacent inequity. All right, uh, next up, I have a poem about dreams, simply titled Dreams. I don't come up with very complex titles for my poems, uh, but this is written when I was thinking about uh, both meanings of the word dream in a sense as a goal that people have and uh, the strange and often unexplainable things that we have when we're asleep. So here we go. What? is a dream. As abstract as it may seem, is it really just reaction of synapses in my mind seeing contracting and compacting the fractions of my memory, matching and redacting in freeform chemistry? Although I can't place quite what I'm facing, the feeling won't abate that I have faced it before, a rearrangement of strange and inflamed things struck and raised by lightning at my brain's core. Hopes and goals might be presented in farewell. I stepped on this impossible Assyrian stairwell, bare in the air of a careless child. I stare into the world my mind has compiled, a ship of Theseus, peace from all the things I have known, releasing from the creases new situation and tone. Without peace, it will ceaselessly reach for the past, retrieving with caprice elements of days bygone. I take the wheel, a feeling of ease running through me as I drop the sails and failingly prepare for destiny, a journey of my own making. I'm undertaking to achieve serendipity. Though there's so much to distract, nothing can here hold me back. I'm on track to go act, interacting with what I see before me. The sea calls indefinitely, it determined and defined, becoming not compliant. I press in against the wind, flourishing and vibrant, client to none. I sail towards the sun, running at full force till my will be crack. Now resistance is back as the thunder undermines my selfish attack. As great and dangerous waves surround me, I must face as a fact my own mortality. Unreceding they intercede my course. The full force of a lightning strike hits and I scream. I was a fool to coolly reach for my dream in the stream when in reality it's not as it seems. A rude awakening that's true nonetheless. May unease festers design put through all this arrest. In this day, I am slaving away, crushed by the weight, won't dissipate, victim to fate and expectations that are biting me, perpetual piety to what I believe I should be, even if it's not what I want, truly. These gray clouds are a cage, making for gloom, while the fumes from the fire grow ever higher. This meaningless goal that I set for myself now precludes my truest desire. I reach out to reclaim my composure, trying to gain some closure before it all ends. Then I realize I can't do this alone on my own, but if I just had my dearest friends. The dots connect, my mind receives, it sends them back, now I believe. I wear their care to fan out the flames, use advice as ice to cool down the pain. I was a fool to think that I could get through this alone, but fear sinks down now and I feel at home. So I forge on with a song of my hopes now leading the way through a world of subconscious design crafted to convey my thoughts and desires and fears and dires an amalgamation of my psychological display. What is a dream? As abstract as it may seem, is it really just reaction of synapses of my mind seen contracting and compacting the fractions of my memory, matching and redacting in free form chemistry to form a reflection of progression of life with its striving and strife, its wide capacity for happiness abundantly rife. The mysticality of the mind confounds us, though it allows us to reach what we esteem. I implore that we forge through the hardship that surrounds us and work hard to achieve our dreams. That is all I have for tonight. I have one question for you, Corey. Absolutely. Where have you been all my life? That was amazing. Like, um, please come back to our open mics. Please just, you, you can't leave us now. Oh, I do plan to. I, I was wanting to attend the last few, but we had some issues that didn't work out. So I, I, I will be sure to to attend the future ones. I mean, you you have to, you can't leave us. This, <laughs> that was dope. That was fantastic. Glad to hear it. Thank you so much. Amazing. Wow. Okay. Uh, for the Facebook 
peoples, hi, say your voices, open mic every fourth Friday of the month. Um, if you want to donate to us, you can donate via Venmo at Sacred Voices. Um, please fund the sports in fund the support, fund and support us <laughs> um, and all of the things that we're doing. We have a poetry workshop coming up. I will be a co-facilitator of that poetry workshop. It is happening at the Four Mile Historic Park, May 8th, 12 to 4 p.m. It will be in person, but outdoors, so social distance wise. And if you're interested, get in contact with us via Facebook or go to fourmilepark.org and you can sign up there. We are looking for a new logo. We are looking for a new logo. If you are a young person who does art, if you know someone who does art, please send them our way. We need a logo like yesterday. Um, <laughs> yeah, and there's, there's a prize. You can get some money for making our fabulous logo. And also you will just get my love and affection because I will appreciate you for doing that. All righty, I will do one poem and then I believe Zachary is up next and then Korea and all the wonderful people. Um, I will do one poem, two. Do y'all ever like go into your notes section and then like the poet fairies steal your poem that you were just looking at? It sucks, I hate it. Okay, I found it. It is lovely. It's called If Survival Was Erased. This is a very special poem to me because I titled this poem. Um, I don't title my poems. So, If Survival Was Erased. Octavia tried to warn us. So grab a handful of seeds, braid it into the closest nappy head and send them on their way. I have no means to outrun this. I'm fighting this head on. I'm gonna make them work for my demise and make damn sure they never achieve it. I ain't dying anytime soon. I'm gonna live unapologetically black and carefree. Uncle Jimmy was right. I don't belong here, but where if any will accept the power the skin has. I wonder if I still have time to apply for my passport. I actually got my passport a couple weeks ago and that was the longest time I've ever spent in the US passport office. Back to the poem. Better yet, is it too late for me to catch a flight to the moon? I want to be somewhere where existing shouldn't have to feel like a myth. I'll carry a pack of scissors, better yet a machete, and that's word to Mama Ja, a long leash is still a leash, so I cut ties to a place that never wanted me to succeed. If the way of survival is by any means necessary, then I'll feed my golden neck, ebony jet black dragon with ear, whoa, let me start that over again because this is my favorite part. If the way of survival is by any means necessary, then I'll feed my golden neck, ebony jet black crested dragon with rainbow iridescent wings, the bones of my oppressor. Yeah, I got a dragon. Yeah, my dragon is blickety black just like me. Yeah, I got magic and an imagination to fit it too. Ain't that the most powerful thing a black body could have? I have no means to outrun this. I'm fighting this head on. Like all those that came before me, I got that soul, that juice, my uncle's swaggy, fresh presence. I don't need a moment, I need a lifetime, like my lifetime, like 1.5 billion lifetimes. Life never times itself, so I will. Pat Parker once said, the first thing you do is forget I'm black. Second, you must never forget that I am black. And so remember that this black body was here. This black body existed. I, black body survived and had no means to outrun it because it couldn't catch up anyway. And that is, that is my poem. That is my poem. And yes, thank you. Lovely, lovely. Oh, you screaming in the club. Why are you in the club? We in a panorama. How'd you get in? <laughs> um, lovely. All righty. Zachary, you ready? It's so nice to see Zach back. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. Doing good. You guys are all so incredible. Oh, you guys have been killing it. <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm going to be singing a few songs, um, maybe two songs tonight. Um, I have a show on May 2nd at your mom's house, Denver. So if you guys want to be there, come see me play. I'd love to see you guys. Um, yeah, the first one I'm going to do is called Potential. Um, 
It was on my first EP that I put out. And yeah, I just wrote this song when I felt like the, the friendship that I was in was impending doom and I was very dramatic. So I wrote a whole song about it. <laughs> but yeah, this one's called Potential. Lately I've been feeling so bad I can't get to the root of what we have But I know That it's gone I once thought that we were best of friends Now I'm reconsidering what I was thinking that day And I thought That we were so for you so hard I never let people think what they wanted to think about you and now I'm stuck here all alone with no friends and no home nowhere to call my own no no Potential was there. feeling so bad I can't get to the root of what we have but I know that it's gone thank you <laughs> thank you um yeah this next song I'm gonna do is called scared um this one's actually a new one so I'm, I haven't played this for anyone yet but you guys so um yeah so I'm gonna do this one this one's called scared I wrote this um in December I had some pretty scary stuff happen um and I wrote this song to remind myself that living in that emotion while I need to is okay um and I think that's a very valuable thing for everybody to know that you don't have to rush through these emotions when you're dealing with stuff and um yeah this one's called scared I'm scared, I'm scared, 
scared of people and what they're capable of. I'm scared. I'm scared. The things that people do to make you feel confused. I wonder what it's like to not have this trauma in my heart. Can you take me back to when I was young? I wish I could escape. Oh, I wish I could forget about the things that I've seen. The things that I've been through. I'm scared, yeah. I'm scared, scared of people and what they're capable of, I'm scared, yeah. I'm scared, scared of the things that people do to make you feel confused. Thank you. All right, I'll play one more sad one and then I'll be done. Um, but yeah, this one is called Today and I don't think it needs much of an interrupt. Um, I don't think it needs much of explaining but I think we will all relate to this. So this one's called Today. I felt 
like that today. I'm trying to find my place. I can't find the way. And that's it. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thanks. So lovely. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just want to say thank you guys to um, for doing all of this. You guys are so incredible for putting all these people together. And I think it was so incredible that you guys are still doing this. Um, yeah, it's really been so awesome to see. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, much like Ford, you can't leave us now. Yeah, I know. What the heck? <laughs> I will. <laughs> Yay, amazing. Thank you so much. Um, wow, we're gonna end early. That's lovely. Maybe I did I miss anyone? I don't think I missed anyone besides besides my sibling, besides Korea, who's actually watching us on a TV. What the heck? That's amazing. I don't even know how Korea. Wow, my sibling. I love Korea so much. A lot of people ask me about Korea and I'm like, don't, no, she's busy, go away. Go away, she's busy, she don't need no more, go away. Um, yes, I love Korea. Korea, are you, are you ready to, to end our lovely show? I am, nice, cool. Um, thank y'all for having me. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to spit tonight, but like, I'm very grateful for the space and to be able to share poems. Um, these have been sitting in my body. Some of them I've read before, um, three of them know. Um, but this first one is for like all the black girls with body dysmorphia and eating disorders. My mother tells me that she used to be thin. The last sliver of water aching down the length of a neck, a bean pole reaching up towards the sky. She tells me that I ruined her body. Her stomach now empty from carrying a moon, I have left her with an empty plot of land where blood used to be. And so I tried to hang myself from the sky and light up a last shimmer of a ripple in a lake of her eye to make being her daughter something worthy of reverence. But I turn out to be more circle and wide hipped gaping and awkward and something she is not proud of. She tells me to stay out of the kitchen and so I swallow myself whole, making no noise in her garden. In my mother's garden, it is always winter somehow. We are big boned and built for an empty harvest. Heirlooms are inherited from an empty basket. Teaches your stomach how to be hollow or at least learn to stretch our hips and trade the meaning of void for full. We learn to walk back from the earth empty handed. My body becomes the only thing I have ever tried to kill. Some days I wake up next to my body outside of my body and it feels like the closest thing I will ever get to a crime scene. I dig a hole somewhere in the middle of a morsel of flesh I have yet to feed in a generation. Stomach hollow, I place a vacant ad for rent as if someone can take better care of this earth. No past life that has inhabited this body can make their way fast up enough my throat. My mouth has been closed like a refrigerator door and I am learning to be consumed rather than, than to consume anything. When I look at this swollen bellied girl, there is a faint echo that says, black girls don't have eating disorders and I curl up into the pit of my stomach. How did you get this way? How did you shrink this way that no one sees me in plain sight? Disappearing girl is only believable if you can fit her in between your teeth and be less Sprite can in their mouth. So you reach back into your throat and try to grab your thin mother spinning and swirling. She makes her way into your stomach and you then turn to starvation when bulimia doesn't do anymore. Snacks start to sound like giving up. We start guzzling coffee or walking around grocery stores to nowhere and no basket to fill our stomach. The trail of food slithering down my throat sounds like surrender. I am utilizing the skill of cutting onions to cut myself into more palatable sizes. I stay out of the kitchen and move into my throat, acquaint myself of what this breath means to be narrowing and shrinking and shrinking and shrinking smaller and smaller and smaller until there is nothing left. And my mother sees me in her and I return to her, her body. 
kind of depressing, I know. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> thanks. Um, I have three more, they're pretty short. And I'm always like laughing at myself because I'm saying like I'm never writing, but that's just not true when I look at like my notes app. <laughs> um, so I think what I will do now is um, an ode to Micaiah Bryant. Um, yeah. Today I am sad. There has been a tightness in my throat that no one knows how to talk to. A freight train of bodies visits me every night and there are limbs hanging out the windows like ivy on opium funded buildings. I try to keep my fingers busy when someone looks at me kissing their dead hands and I smile. When the foolish boy asks me why I am not happy, I respond that there is a riot in my fingers, a protest in my bones, and that I was born from a womb passed down from glass and splinters, and that I have never known this peace you so desperately want to believe is a part of America's origin story. I respond that there has been a pit in my chest since 2013, and I occasionally try to fill it with Skittles or tea, but even now the boot and blocks in the street don't bring me much solace. I respond that while all black children look gorgeous and blue, I have never wanted to return a color to the sky so badly as it carousels bodies in the middle of the street, a promise as it intervenes with the red ghost that he will be back always and there will always be more names to say. And here comes the train in the morning now too, right on time. Yeah, I, I encourage everyone to, to check your massage noir, to check um, the way that you are interacting with this baby, um, I, the discourse that I'm seeing around all Black people and their deaths is depressing. It's disgusting, to be honest with you. And um, yeah, I we got we have to do better. We just have to do better. Um, but with that being said, these last two poems are like more hopeful. I like to end on a, a more hopeful and positive manner but I have these soil mates instead of soul mates I call them soil mates and uh, she, they're just like the best people ever um and so I'm really bad at like expressing myself to my friends and like the ways that I love them and so I write them poems and if I don't have a poem about you in my notebook I, I don't know I don't know what to say like take what you will from that Brie yes you do you do have a poem <laughs> Okay, but this is to my soil mates, I love you dearly. I always think that there is a better time to say the things that are in my body. Running from lips have always served me well, from being bludgeoned from the feeling that you might not reflect. I always think that there is a better park to say it in or softer grass or when you are not furrowing your brow at me. Maybe not a Friday because I always bleed on Friday. Maybe I make all my bruises up too and should just stay where the only thing that is real ever is between your flesh and my flesh. I touch the ring of a bullet where a summer hits you and I offer milk that I know does nothing but soak you in white. When you are who you say you are, it is easier to stand back to the violet lights that carousel faces who I do not know on Sherman and halt the wall and fire back. It is because you have never asked me that I put my body in front of yours. I have stopped running. I have learned to speak to the things that make me flee. And I will still love you in all of the parks. And I will make my lips a litany that I do not want to sacrifice. You offer me gray hairs instead of blood I thought I admired. And I was told to feel like my mother's guilt that huddles in my bones sometimes. And I push it out of my pregnant heavy body, a new moon you can wear for the possibility of seeing two more generations before I walk off, if only I dare to speak. Yeah, I just love them so much. And this last one's very, very short. Thank you. Um, yeah, it speaks for itself. There is still good laughter in our bones that shudder through our mouths and whisper that tomorrow is coming. You know, I have never been impressed with gritted teeth or the way my father grimaces at all functions, but I have always loved the thunder cracking from the sides of his lips and the sounds of dimples pooling in the middle of his cheeks. I love love and I love you for what it is worth. And that's me being a simp and I'm done. <laughs> 
love that. One thing about Korea is she stays in a park. In a park. It, like, if you go to a park, Korea is there. Like, every time I, like, watch her Snapchat, I'm like, you're in a park in. Or she's skating. That's fun, too. Wow. Well, that is that is our show. That is a lovely show. Before I leave you all, you all cannot leave without buying Suzy Q's book, A Gospel of Bones. It has been tagged and pinned in our Facebook Live video. You have no excuses. Buy this book. Buy this book. And buy more books from her. Um, that was very lovely. Uh, we are Sacred Voices. We have an open mic every fourth Friday. That's eight. Fourth Friday of the month. Um, we have a poetry work shop coming up May 8th. I will be co-facilitating. It will be outside in a park. Korea, you should come through. Um, <laughs> um, 12 to 4. It will be great social distancing, wearing masks, CDC regulations are intact. Um, please let us know if you are interested via our Facebook page or if you go to fourmilepark.org, you can sign up through there. If you want to donate to Sacred Voices and support the work that we do, uh, you can Venmo us at Sacred Voices. Um, no dashes, no underlines. I really love the like encouraging thumbs up that I'm getting from Aston. <laughs> Oh God, I tried to keep it together. I couldn't, um, that's, that's, that's our show y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Saying, I don't, I, I can't end this. So whenever Aston ends it, it's the abruptness of when it'll be ending.